Fantasy Sims, and we are back with more Color X Malice, and last time we got, well, our third bad ending, technically, um, that we could do. Um, I was going to go in and do some of the other bad endings, but we can't do them until we get the good ending, so that kind of sucks, but whatever. We've gotten three of them, so we're going to go down the good path the way we're supposed to, and then once we finish, we'll be able to do the other three bad endings. I figured we wouldn't be able to do the, you know, low romance kind of the tragic love ending or whatever um, till after we played the good ending because we have to start a chapter six and then it might be like too spoilery. Like we saw that with Animoto's. Like it was almost the same, but it was slightly different. Um, Some of the same stuff happened, uh, but I kind of figured we could do the other two bad endings because they happened before but I mean technically before chapter six they be skip it we'd be seeing things we've already seen but we can't go in the chapter select for Takeru until I don't know maybe when we get in chapter six we can I don't know but it is what it is for right now so we're just gonna go down the normal path and get the good ending and then we'll ruin it by giving you the bad endings because whatever uh, you know, we do it both ways around here. So anyway, uh, okay. So I just couldn't go home. So I thought about what I should do. So we're supposed to go to the office because otherwise he just, he leaves and joins Adonis, but he saves us, but it's still sad. Anyway, <coughs> oh my God, I'm choking it up. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, that hurt. I inhaled and I'm choking to death on my own spit. Oh my God. I'll try the office. Maybe he was just at the office this entire time. I knew I was grasping at straws as I headed over to the detective office. Uh, on the fifth floor of the building was a light that made me gasp. The light was quite literally one final ray of hope. Maybe because we went to his house first and we would have missed him. That's like the whole point of the bad end. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I was assuming. So he better fucking be here. Could it be... I ran up the stairs of the building and readied my voice to shout. Sasazuka! Whoa! Well, what's going on? An attack? Is this place gonna get set on fire? Anamoto! Oh, fuck. Maybe he was napping. He had fallen to the floor and was getting back up. I bowed an apology to Anamoto. I'm sorry. I just thought that Sasazuka was back. Takeru, I, I haven't seen him today. Did something happen? No, I don't have a way to contact him. Is it all right if I just waited for him here for a bit? Go ahead. I'll make some coffee. He's like now being nice to us. I watched Inamoto go to the other room and heard him let out a sigh. I like the fact that he's opening a door and closing it, despite the fact that we can clearly see that it's an opening and there's just like a thing here. There's no fucking door here. I can see the bed right there. There's no door. Like... <laughs> It was like, that's the sound your screen makes when you move it. Like, that's weird. But anyway, I watched Inamoto go to the other room and heard him let out a sigh. I didn't know whether or not to tell him the circumstances because I was unaware of how much of Sasazuka's past they knew. I hesitated to reveal things that Sasazuka might not want known. I drank the coffee Inamoto made for me, and while we chatted idly, I felt myself gradually growing calmer. Anamoto kept glancing at me, probably trying to find the right moment to pop in with what he wanted to ask. Even if I can't tell him the exact circumstances, I should still ask for his opinion. I viewed this as part of the investigation and opened my mouth. Anamoto, is there anyone that you'd like to get revenge upon? Huh, revenge? Yes, the common thread that ties the X-Day cases together is revenge. Sasazuka told me that the foundation of a good investigation is to think the way of a way a criminal does of an good investigation. No, that's not how English works. For example, if someone that you love dearly was murdered in cold blood, how do you think that person would act? What about you? Can you imagine yourself hating someone so much that you want to kill them? Yes. No. <laughs> Even if I, even if someone I love was murdered, I didn't think I would hate that person enough to actually go and kill them. No, but you could hate them enough to want to kill them. It's different. I can't imagine it. 
and someone that hadn't been hurt. I can't just yell down for my high horse that revenge is never the answer. As someone that hadn't been hurt. Okay, that makes more sense. But if I were to dirty my hands with revenge, I know there would be someone saddened by it. That, yeah. Family, friends, colleagues? I'd think of their faces and it would force me to stop. Or maybe that's what I want to believe. When the situation actually arose, no one could definitively say they would never do it in the heat of the moment. As long as I couldn't understand the emotions of a perpetrator who was desperately seeking revenge, as long as I didn't get Sasazuka's emotions, would it really be impossible for me to stop Adonis? Would it really be impossible for me to stop Sasazuka? It seemed like a confession, and Enomoto listened to me quietly. After I was finished, he turned his head and gave me a confused look. You mentioned a perpetrator's emotions. Why do you need to understand them? Huh? Well, I'm sure that's one way to investigate, but that's just one method. It's not like I can talk, because I quit. But are you trying to say police need to empathize with criminals? Well, I don't think that's true at all. Oh. A well, policeman's job is to catch criminals. To catch them so they don't commit more crimes for the sake of the potential victim and the criminal. Why was I mistaken? If it was just to have empathy, you didn't need to be a cop to do that. What you must do is catch criminals and put them somewhere they could atone for their crimes. And that's a police officer's job. Anamoto, thank you. Give me a break. If I get too serious, I start to get really uncomfortable. Anamoto was being bashful, so I smiled at him while picking up my cell phone. I wanted to think the same as someone close to me. Uh, I thought that feeling was important. But to blindly think the same thing simply for the sake of doing it was an empty gesture. When they've chosen the wrong path, you have to take their hand and lead them back. If I can't do that, I can't really call myself his partner. I thought a little before writing a message. The message theme should be... Are you going to have to make a choice here? I'm about to cry. I believe in you. No, I'm about to cry. <laughs> That's what we're supposed to choose. But also, I believe in you is more like, you can go do the murder thing to me, right? Like, I wonder if Sasazuka remembers. When we were drinking in his room, I said these words while I was pretty intoxicated. But they came from the heart, and they were powerful enough to shut him up. I kept that in mind as I put my thoughts into the message. I'm about to cry. Just be good and wait. Oh! He replied to us finally. That was the only response, but it showed that our hearts connected. That short but gentle message embraced me and filled me with warmth. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Hey, you got a bonus point because she actually said, I'm about to cry. That's a bonus point because, like, I mean, that whole spot on the go, the go board was supposed to be, like, for when I am literally like, oh, guys, I'm going to cry. Um, So you get, like, two points for that because she's about to cry. And I literally just, I'm going to cry. But it's so cute. Oh, it warms my heart. Oh, God. I can't. I can't handle it. Like, I, did, do you just, is it just me? Like, am I just so cold and dead inside that, like, when this happens and something like that is like, you're like, oh, it hurts a little, but it's going to hurt. <laughs> like, it does. Like, there's some kind of, like, physical, like, tightening in your chest. It's like, ah, it's uncomfortable. It's not normal. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you read something and everyone's like, oh, my God, I got so emotional reading this. And you're like, I felt nothing. Maybe I'm a jerk. I don't know. Like, you're like, or it just doesn't. You're like, hmm. No, I feel nothing about it. Like, but things like this, I read them like, ah, I feel something. Ow, it hurts. <laughs> Chest pain. Or I'm having a heart attack. I don't know. Whatever. I'm going to say it's the game. Probably not having a heart attack. <laughs> Who knows? And then, Enomoto said he had some business to attend to and waved as he left the office. He might have been uh, might have been being considerate to me since I told him that I wanted to wait for Sasazuka here. The office was too quiet for me to just sit there all by myself. But I wasn't afraid anymore. See, so if we hadn't texted him, maybe that's what it is. It's not just that we showed up to the office. We showed up to the office, so we got here earlier. But we also texted him. I'm going to cry. Don't you dare leave me. You know what I mean? Where we went to his house, we were like, God damn it, where the fuck are you? And like, we didn't do anything that pu pulled at his little heartstrings. And, I mean, he did make a deal to save us, so that was kind of cute. And I hope the fuck he didn't make that same deal. You cannot have a happy ending with him fucking running off to Adonis, goddammit. I, I will literally throw this fucking game. You don't pull a Toa on me, motherfucker. 
I mean, I know he's not going to die, but still. That bad ending. Like, you can't good ending me like that. I don't know. Anyway, but I wasn't afraid anymore. I'm a little afraid. I knew Sasazuka would be back. Yeah, but he came back in the bad path, too. I'm just saying. I believed in that as I slowly fell into a deep slumber. No! This is what happened the last time! Oh, but this is chapter six, so that's good. We never made it this far. We just ended there. Good. Good. Good, good, good. Don't you dare fucking... I heard a sound. Don't you dare. In my sleep, the sound that stirred me awake was the sound of a door opening and closing. Enomoto, is he back? I bolt up. Sasazuka! And it's fucking Yanagi, and he's like, Jesus. That's right. I have a message. Uh, I have to message Kazuki. Tell him I'm staying out tonight. I have some bread I already brought, uh, bought for breakfast and some leftover salad in the refrigerator. While I collected my addled thoughts, I reached for my cell phone. Whoa. I hand con uh, contacted something contacted something warm, and I felt it twitch. I nervously opened my eyes. Yay! Oh, I just, let's just pet him for a minute. Oh, I'm so happy you, you don't ever leave me again. I'm literally going to wrap myself around you and just like, you can't go anywhere without me now because I don't trust you. Because you're going to go join Adonis and break my heart. Don't you dare. <laughs> don't leave me. So, huh? I hand reached out to cover my mouth and he placed his index finger in front of his mouth. Be quiet. I nodded and Sasazuka started to poke around on his cell phone. I waited for another few moments. My cell phone vibrated. He's texting us. This is adorable. I don't want the caller to pick up. Don't talk until I say so. I quietly nod. It, nod. I'll be working nonstop starting now. Until morning. All through the night? With that short statement, I blinked and tried to respond. Is there anything I can help with? Nothing. Go to sleep. That's all. I love that. That's all. <laughs> that is all. I <laughs> like that. It's like, nothing. Go to sleep. That's all. And you're like, okay, that's his. That's it. We're done with this conversation. <laughs> like, I try to communicate anything I can help with. Did she mouth it? Like, how does he read her mind, though? Like, that's some romance shit right there, right? She's like, just gesturing wildly. And he's like, nothing you can help with. Don't worry. Go to sleep. And she's like, I don't even know what I was saying. Anyway, he patted me on the head as he sent. Uh, that concise message before sitting down in front of his PC. That's just adorable. He's like, nothing, go to sleep. Pat, pat. Okay. Oh my God, he loves us so much. A at least let me make you coffee. Again, he's fucking psychic. I already bought coffee. I know you want attention, but I don't want the caller picking up keystrokes. Go to sleep. Could he read my mind? That's what I'm saying! How does he seem to know exactly what I'm thinking? After the wave of messages coming, he signed off with that emoji and caused me to fall flat on my face. When I turned around, I saw him smile and it filled me with emotion. What is... Okay, hold on. Like... I don't... I mean, it looks like a penguin to me, but, like, what is it? What? I okay. I don't know. I I have emojis, but I don't do the old-fashioned texty emojis. And, like, they were literally, like, smiley face, winky face. They were never this in-depth, okay? I was never that, like, we had the simple shit. And then you kids got all fancy with this shit. And then it was like, well, now we got real ones. I literally just clicked the smiley face, and it shows an actual smiley face, and we don't have to do this keystroke kind so I don't know what the hell that's supposed to be it looks like a penguin though to me I don't know I don't know what I mean somebody tell me but I'll forget by the time we get to this point but anyway is it just the fact that he's sending us an emoji like if he literally sent us like a finger emoji we'd be like oh my god you still love me I don't know I just just saying anyway when I turned around I saw him smile and it filled me with emotion. I know, right? I can't even see him smile. It fills me with emotion. Can we get a CG of that? Please, I just need it. He usually had such sharp eyes, but in his writing, I could sense his humor. Sasazuka was right there. Now he was somewhere I could reach him. That relieved me a bit. I started to doze off again. 
but I managed to dash off a quick message first. I fucking love you. Just tell him you love him. Just fucking tell him. Welcome back. I missed you so much. <laughs> oh, yay. We get to hear what he thinks. I love it. Ah! Hold on. I'm having a heart attack. Oh, it hurts. Oh, God. And the Grinch's heart grew three sizes that day. Oh, it's going to burst out of my chest. Oh, oh, my heart. I can't take it. Ugh. God, I love him so fucking much. Look, Animoto was adorable and I love them together, but like, I just, I love the, I love the fucking marshmallows and I love the fucking glasses assholes. And I love the ones that are always like, kind of like either a robot or they just are like, leave me alone, I hate you. And then they just love you at the, I just, I just, because they're the softest, squishiest things. And you're like, oh, I just got through your crunchy outer shell. <laughs> Ah! And I'm sorry, I just love that he's such a squishy on the inside. It's adorable, and I just want to squeeze him. <sighs> okay, sorry. Anyway, <clears throat> when I saw a message from Spacey, I couldn't help but smile. <laughs> we made him smile. <laughs> it makes me giggle. When I turned around to look, she was right there, sleeping peacefully in front of me, with a smile on her face. Just you wait. It's only a little bit longer. Oh, he's going to hack the collar, isn't he? I turned my head to face the PC and tried to type on the keyboard as quietly as possible. <gasps> he's being so considerate of us sleeping! I didn't have time to waste right now. I had to quickly crack the data that he gave me. Once I was done analyzing this, I'm sure... This happened a while ago. After I ended the video connection with Akito, I had Spacey go home first. Oh no, what did you do to get her? Hey, hey, whoa, whoa, we're going back in time. We just got some time warp shit. Anyway, so this was two days ago. Anyway, damn it. Took my anger out on Mineo's chair until I was out of breath. This is the worst. This is the worst feeling I could possibly imagine. Oh. Those cruel gunshots. Oh. Mother's smile stained in blood. Just remembering his smile when the ruling came down in his favor. That sight replayed over and over in my mind. Years had passed since then. But when I saw him again, white-hot hatred reignited in my mind. We'll hold you and cuddle you while you cry, honey. It's okay. Don't don't go. Don't do anything. Please tell me you didn't do anything bad. I want to kill him. Even I, even if I have to take the hand of the devil. Even if I have to step into hell. If I can kill him with my own hands, I don't care what else. Tell me you won't go anywhere. I don't care what else. He's like, what? wait, what? Before I could truly engulf myself in hatred, that voice echoed in the back of my head. Oh, yay. Compared to this hatred, I feel such a tiny voice. Don't go to the other side. Say it. Or else. Or else I. I'll cry. Those words in her face forced their way into my thoughts. Like a thin lifeline, it was enough to anchor me to the side. Oh my god, I love it! Oh! Give yourself another point, because guys, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Not for real, you don't get the points for that. I mean, technically, you really should only get points once in a game, but you know what? Fuck it. It's a free-for-all, okay? Snap out of it, Takeru Sasazuka. Who says that? Do you go around like, snap out of it, Spacey Sims? I don't say my full name when I'm like, you might be like, snap out of it, Spacey. Like, I don't know, anyway. So you full name yourself, like first, middle, and last. God, if you have a long ass name. What do I need to do right now? Think, think. I slap my face and clench my teeth. If I made her cry, it would be incredibly annoying. Oh, we annoy you and you love us. I fired myself up at those words, and I mentally played back the conversation I have over the PC with the keto. I had. I played it again and again. The attractive recruitment from Adonis. I tried to hold out and find something to glean from this video. This would be a long night. Okay, so then this is yesterday. So this is the night after we had the conversation we sent. This is what he did. Okay. Where are you right now? 
If you can read this message right now, please respond. I can't respond. I can't pick up the phone. I put away my cell phone as I try to compose my thoughts. Oh. Spacey was at the department right now. Now was the time to move. And we're standing outside. You motherfucker, I've been standing here all day. I called in sick to work. You couldn't do that shit. Like, see, they'd be like, ha she's at the department. And you're like, well, you know what? You'd be like, I'm taking the American road here, not the Japanese road. I'm going to stand right here and I'm be like, you motherfucker, I called out sick. I didn't just, I just didn't show up to work. You can't do this shit in America. Because your girlfriend would be like, bitch, I'm following your ass. Or just hire a private detective. Which you are, so that's really weird. Like, <laughs> how that would work. Animoto, can you just follow him? <laughs> I put on my coat and went out into the blinding sunlight. After pulling an all-nighter, my head felt heavy. But I also actually felt more awake than ever. Akito's message to me wasn't meant to be taken literally. There's something I noticed as I rewatched the video over and over. So we recorded it. Okay. Kido was trying to impart something to me the best he could. <gasps> and I've already sent a parting gift to Kazuki. He might not realize it, but it was atonement for myself. Sasazuka, this is a personal request to you. Please make no mistake about who it is that must be judged. Atonement. Judgment. What did Akito Sarah atone for? What judgment did he want me to see? I almost had it, but there wasn't enough information. I just stared at the screen and knew that I'd never arrive at the answer sitting here. So I got up and headed back to that place. Little brother, coming in. What do you want? Welcome to Karu. Come on, come on, calm down, Kazuki. Don't let him in. This is my house. Okazaki, go over there for a second. I need to talk to him. He must have sensed that it was serious, because Kazuki shut up quickly. Okazaki nodded in understanding and headed to the living room. I'll cut right to the chase. Before Akito disappeared, do you remember him giving you anything or having you hold on to anything? Huh? I wouldn't remember. Oh, we let him borrow each other's stuff all the time. If you don't remember, try harder. Just list off everything you can think of. Well, uh, now that you mention it, I got Akito's new composition on the day that he disappeared. It's a great song as usual, but the last part seemed unfinished, so I remember wanting to talk to him about it. Do you have that song with you? Kazuki gave me the file, so I transferred it to my laptop and opened up the music file that Akito had given him. The moment I saw the file name, my face tensed up. The title is Atonement. Hey, does this mean that you found something out about Akito? Then, I'm in the middle of an investigation. I can't tell you the details, but I'll do my best. Let me use your room for a bit. I need to work on something right now. I cut the conversation and chased Kazuki out before I turned on my PC. That's so nice! I'm taking your room now. And he's like, first Okazaki, now you! Jesus! Poor Kazuki. I feel so bad for him. Oh, Akito. I knew it. The music file that Akito gave Kazuki wasn't just ordinary music. It sounded like music if you played it on a media player. But if you dig into the data, there's a code woven into the file. I continued to poke at the file to tease out the data, and soon a bit of text emerged. Because Akito knows that we have a collar on, probably. But Akito is a good kid, even though he did terrible things for the wrong reasons. But us loving Kazuki and being supportive of him in Animoto's Red is what made him go, you know what, I am not going to do this because I want to support him. But we didn't quite have that same, you know, but he saw, I mean, we didn't quite have that same rapport with him in this one um, because we didn't quite get there. But... He knows at least that we support Kazuki and we're not as bad. So I think there's something in his mind like that would be like, I need to help you. Like, I don't want you to die because I don't think that you're a bad person. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if we hadn't been supportive of Kazuki, we were like, no, it's stupid. You're going to do what mom and dad tell you and whatever. Oh, yeah. He would have been like, bye, bitch. Like, you're going to die. Like, but you know what I mean? Like, I think 
and, and the fact that like it's a brother sister bond and he had that and is missing that you know what i mean so i think that that kind of I, I, that could be part of it too like if you think about it, he didn't listen to his sister his sister was in pain and he kind of ignored her and that's kind of what we he feels like we were doing to kazuki but we're like no it's just we don't talk because i've been busy but i want to support him and that's awesome and i'm really happy that he's happy and doing this and like that's great and he's like oh you're being a better big sister than i was a big brother and like you know oh akito you're such a wonderful person why'd you have to go and blow people up oh akito such a good kid. Akita, you're such a good kid. Where'd you go wrong? <laughs> like, it hurts me so much. I think that's what makes you love him even more because he's such a wonder. You're like, you're so great. And then you did something horrible and you're like, ah, I should be like, no, you suck because you're a bad person. But you're like, oh my God, you're such a good person, but you did bad things for the wrong reason. I mean, I understand what you were thinking, but oh no. <laughs> like, no, Akito, no. Anyway. I continue to poke at the file to tease out the data, and soon... Okay, I read that a bit of text emerge. It's a URL. I navigate to the web page. All right, it's connected. As expected, the server's located overseas. It seemed like I was on the right track. On the screen was a prompt with a signal, a single letter X to enter a password, waiting for me to input something. I thought a little and typed in a password judgment. I first attempted the username Akito used for the video chat. Didn't work. Guess it's not that simple. It's too risky to use a brute force method of cracking it. If he knows his way around a computer like he claimed he did, the site's going to erase the data after a certain number of attempts. Akito led me here, so he must also want me to crack this data. There has to be a hint somewhere. <laughs> And I've already sent a, par a parting gift to Kazuki. He might not realize it, but it was atonement for myself. His words and actions. There has to be something. He said judgment, right? Sasazuka, this is a personal request to you. There is a hidden hint here. Please make no mistake about who it is that must be judged. The title of the song he gave Kazuki was Atonement. Not Atonement and Judgment. Yeah. It's a great song, as usual. The last part seemed unfinished, so I remember wanting to talk to him about it. Unfinished? Well, in that case... I picked up my cell phone and scrolled through my contacts. Hello, Yanagi. It's me. Concert club was so empty compared to the last time I was here. According to the info, he should be here practicing today. At this point, I'd received multiple messages from Spacey. It bothered me to just ignore them all. But I entered the concert club. Oh, it bothers him to ignore us. That's so cute. <gasps> oh, the Grinch's heart just grew an extra size because real men just ignore your text and they don't feel guilty about it. That's one thing. It hurt me to ignore them, but I'm on the trip. I understand what he's doing, but like I show my police ID to the staff and they let me through as if they were expecting me. How does. Oh, right. He rejoined. I was like, how does he have a police ID? Right. I forgot. <laughs> Woo! That went right over my head and just smacked me upside the back of it. I was like, wait! I'm here looking for Yasuhiro Ishiki. He noticed me and gives me a wary look. Who are you? Police, Yasuhiro Ishiki, I want to talk to you. Are you here to ask me about two years ago again? I've already told you people everything. I don't like the police. Please leave. I expected this reaction. Yasuhiro Shiki had been wrongfully arrested two years ago, when he was suspected of murdering someone by pushing them onto the train tracks. The officer who made that wrongful arrest was murdered in the May incident. So, naturally, Ishii was suspected. I think it's supposed to say Ishiki. Not Ishii. Ishii. Okay. <laughs> We're missing a letter there. His distrust of the police would obviously be pretty high, but now is not the time to care about that. Mino Akito Sarah, right? 
Before he went missing recently, he sent some files for a new song he just composed, didn't he? Title of the song is Judgment, am I wrong? How do you know that? Atonement. He sent him Judgment. Wow. Kazuki Hoshino also had a song sent to him around the same time. There's a code embedded in the song. I need the other half of the data in order to put the code together. Considering Akito's circle of close friends, you and Kazuki were the only people that he'd send this to. And? Let's say that I did receive something like what you're talking about. That's no reason for me to give it to you. Especially if me giving that to you will cause harm to Akito. And you're saying that to me knowing that Akito was involved in a criminal act? Yes. I've known Akito even longer than Kazuki. That's why I know. He was in pain when his sister was murdered. I wasn't surprised when he went missing. And when he was questioned by the police. If he chose that path, that's how it is. What moved Akito... It was an emotion I'm all too familiar with. The wrongful arrest. Yeah... And that turned my whole world upside down. I was one step away from achieving my dream, and everything came crumbling down. All those fans that surrounded me, all my sponsors, they just turned around and thumbed their nose at me, noses at me. Even after I was proven innocent, Yasuhiro Ishiki of Gaimu was already tainted. It's never going to change. So you understand how Okito feels as someone who's... as someone who took his revenge... No, I'm different from Akito. I chose to move on. I won't try to gain back what I lost. I've decided to start anew. What Akito does is Akito's problem. I'm not the one to decide if it's right. All I can do for him is to make sure that I'm on his side. That's why I won't cooperate with you. Shiki's eyes are calm and unmoved. This makes things difficult. He's already, he'd already decided his position despite knowing everything that's going on. How do I gain his trust? What card can I play here? That's when I heard a vibrating noise that undercut the tension. Go ahead and read the message. Being urged on by his wry smile, I looked at the display on my phone. I'm about to cry. That idiot. I let an exclamation slip out when I read such a stupidly honest message. Of course. After the recruitment at attempt, I cut off all contact and didn't even respond. I'm sure she was feeling uneasy. She clung to me when we were drunk and cried like a child. I remember that and quickly composed a response text. I didn't want to do all of this and end up making her cry. I wanted to tell her where I am and what I was doing right now. For the time being, just be good and wait sent off that simple message, although it was filled with my emotion. Mishiki, I know what you want to say, but I can't back down either. It was Akito's wish for me to crack the code in that file. Really? Akito wants that? I'll show you the video of the conversation I had with Akito. Just watch it and decide what you want to do after that. I opened my laptop, played the video, and turned around. I'll be waiting at the stage should realize what's going on. It was a huge gamble. Also bring my laptop with you when you come, because, like, I was risking everything, banking on Ashiki seeing through to Akito's message. Ashiki knew Akito's desire for revenge, so he might find something in that video. Now that Akito had completed his revenge, what would he think? What was in his mind when he gave them that song? The meaning of all that? Soon afterwards, Yasuhiro Shiki exited the green room. He was carrying my PC and a USB drive. The song I got from Akito, it's on this USB stick. Are you sure it's okay? I don't know your circumstances or what exactly he's trying to say, but what I can tell, I can tell that Akito regrets it. He's like a stubborn child there. He can't say what he wanted directly, but he wants others to notice. That's why I'll give this to you. I think that's for the best. All right. I won't waste this chance. I left the concert club and look up at the sky and the scattered stars. I hurry back over to the office. I need to crack this data as soon as possible. 
I didn't know just how much information I was going to have to sift through to get to the data that Akito entrusted to me. But this would lead to the clue for judgment. Damn, Akito. So fucking smart! He's so fucking smart. So wicked fucking smart. The door to the office was unlocked. I entered, disgusted at how lax the security was. Immediately, I saw a silhouette. Wrapped up in a blanket on the sofa was Spacey, sleeping. Mm. Spacey reached out, and I couldn't help but twitch in response. Her eyes slowly opened. Su- mm. Reached out. I covered her mouth immediately. And we all know what happened. Okay. After that, she must have been mentally exhausted as Spacey was sleeping so soundly that I can hear her steady breathing. I go back to analyzing the data and stared at the screen intently. So this is the data Akito left me. Just as I expected, the judgment sound data had a password. When I entered the password in the URL I got from the atonement file, I got access to a huge cache of data. The names of perpetrators they call executors. Although it wasn't everything, there was all the details of the X-Day plan and his, and his own confessions. He must have hacked into a, the Adonis system to obtain this information. Where is it? All the data here is important. These secrets are all actionable intelligence that Investigations HQ can use to completely snuff out Adonis. Where is it? I was searching for different information. The code to the collar. I kept opening and closing windows as I desperately looked through the information. As long as I found that, I could finally be released. Click, 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 click. <laughs> I was awakened by a comforting typing sound on the keyboard. I was dozing in the morning sun when I saw Sasuzuka's back. I'm glad it wasn't a dream. The voiceless words were exchanged last night. The warmth of his hand on me. I love that. Like, I'm glad it wasn't a dream. And it's like, throwback to when we did the bad path. And it was, it wasn't a dream, but it was like, it was like it was a dream. He just came in, took the collar off and disappeared. Oh. It was where I could reach him. Sasuzuka was here right now. It made me so happy I wanted to cry. Has he really been working nonstop the entire night? I should at least get him some coffee. I found it. This is it. Surprised at his sudden cry, I tried to muffle my caller's microphone. But Sasazuka didn't seem to mind as he got up and started walking towards me. Close your eyes. Just shut up and close them. Feeling forced to comply, I closed my eyes without knowing why. Oh. I felt the sensation of a hand on my clothes, which caused me to twitch. <laughs> like, you know what he's doing, but it's still, I was waiting for it to be like, <gasps> whoa! <laughs> Close your eyes. Whoa, buddy! <laughs> like, this is not the time and place. Sasazuka extended his hand and quietly undid the button by my neck. W what are you doing? After he unbuttoned some more of the buttons on my shirt. All right. At the same time, I felt him pull me closer to him. I also felt something touching my neck. Huh? Is this... I heard an electronic noise from my neck as my heart jumped. I had a feeling I knew what he was doing now and... I hit the wrong button! He should have... You know what he should do? Be like, oh no! He should be like, what? I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's fine. I just wanted you to freak out for a minute. After a few more small sounds, I opened my eyes. Oh, that's it. Just you wait. Sasazuka sighed in relief, and then he headed to the room in the back. I watched him go as my trembling fingers touched my neck. The inorganic, metallic feeling was gone. I love that. Like, that's it. Just you wait. And he leaves, and you're like, that sounded kind of sexy. And then you left, though. <laughs> like, nothing to feel there now but the pulsing warmth that greeted my fingers. You're all right now. Sasazuka finished checking something as he said these words with multiple meanings. I'm all right. I'd been forced to stay silent for a while, so I couldn't speak normally. I managed to wring these words out of my quivering throat. How? 
Thanks to Akito, I was finally able to grab those bastards by the tail. Sarah? Uh, Akito. We don't ever call him Sarah. We call him Akito. And the data that he gave me, there were details on how to remove your collar. Finally managed to get it off you. He rubbed his eyes, which were ringed by dark circles, and quietly filled me in. The wiretap bug is still active, so I put it inside a case that blocks radio waves. I'll take this to the station now. We're just getting started. Get ready. Y yes y Okay. Yeah. He said it was thanks to Akito, and he said something about the data. There were many things I didn't understand, but I definitely understood that it was time to move. Sal Suzuka took out a cell phone with me by his side. Minigishi, this is Sasazuka. I found Adonis's hideout. Please gather the investigators immediately. He busted the case wide open. Bitch! Not they just went away and disappeared. It's like, he fucking flushed those motherfuckers out. He's amazing! Don't you love him? I love him. While we headed to the station by taxi, Sasazuka got me up to speed on everything. The insight about Akito in the video chat, song data sent to Kazuki and Shiki, how he analyzed the data from the website that Akito led him to. He told me about all the Adonis secrets that he found, including my caller's data. I'm going to nap. Wake me when we get there. We're there. I mean, you normally walk, so I'm just assuming it doesn't take very long. Sasazuka turned to his side and closed his eyes. Soon I hear him fall asleep. He must be really tired. He passed out almost immediately. I listened to his rhythmic, rhythmic breathing as I looked at the collar in the case. On that night, two weeks ago, and the collar had been placed on me, that's when it all started for me. Today, it would all end. It did all end. We were going to end it together. I mean, the collar part ended, but... <laughs> We've been waiting for you. Sasazuka? Hoshino? Good morning, Minigishi. How are the preparations going? By nine, we'll have all our, all our investigators gathered here. The suspects are likely to resist. I've requested special forces and SDF backup. Special forces, also known as the Special Assault Team. They're police officers in the security division who use weapons to resolve things like hostage situations or even large-scale terrorist acts. Um, also, no, that's not what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do. I can't figure out buttons right now. Our love should be maxed. Yes. Max affection. Oh, you love us so fucking hard, you son of a bitch. I love it. Anyway. Now that their hideout is exposed, it's a matter of whether or not they get away, or we apprehend them first. It's a race against time. Exactly. The investigation's briefing will begin soon. Please get detailed info at HQ beforehand. I mean, like... I guess they don't know you know, because otherwise, like, I mean... The investigators leaf through the data that Sasazuka gathered. All of the investigators are obviously surprised as they read through it. As they read through it. Calm down, everyone. Oh, we'll now begin the emergency briefing. Police Chief Takeda, if you will, please. While the investigators all lined up, the police chief glared at the materials. Sasazuka, give us the details first. I don't remember the voice I gave him. Literally, like, what in the last part? I don't, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Sasazuka is called upon, and everyone in the room immediately turned and gave him their attention at once. Like, he's like, whatever. Sure. <laughs> Meh. Eh. <laughs> Rolls his eyes and sulks up there like the teenagers in The Sims. But he stood up without even showing a hint of being tense as he walked to the whiteboard. I'm Takeru Sasazuka of the Cybercrimes Division. There's something I want to tell everyone here before I explain the distributed materials. Huh? <gasps> we got like a CG of him as he's telling the story. I have no intention of defending criminals, so please don't misunderstand what I'm about to say. I believe that some of the perpetrators of the X-Day incidents are victims themselves. Starting with Manabu Soda, who's already arrested. The murderers from other months had motives for revenge, but didn't have ability or opportunity. Although they, they had murderous intent, they continued living their tortured lives without ever exacting their revenge. The Adonis Syndicate took advantage of them by creating a scheme of substitution murders. It's like a pyramid scheme, but for murder. 
I mean, who thought? Damn, Japan, you just one up everything, don't you? You're like, look, I have something tasty. And Japan's like, I'm going to one up that shit. Here, hold my beer. <laughs> hold my sake. I'm going to one up that. <laughs> like, we're like, America's got pyramid schemes. And they're like, hold my sake. I'm going to fucking one up that shit. We got pyramid schemes for murder. The fuck? It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> it's great. Hi, booger. Oh, you stretchy. Oh, yes, because you've been napping on my shoulder. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, you're so nasty. He's like, he's like, I'm petting him, petting him. He's like, okay. Then all of a sudden he's like, don't touch me. She's a nasty cat. I'm going to pet you. Okay, anyway. Being able to kill without dirtying, dirtying your own hands allowed them to pull the trigger. Take a vengeance where normally that would not have happened. There's a price for that. They were uh, to murder someone that they had no connection to. The brakes for their conscience was weakened. And because they'd already gotten their vengeance, they stepped on the gas. They went on moral autopilot and allowed Adonis to steer them, letting them direct letting them direct them to commit these substitution murders. When I heard it all when I heard it all detailed, it made me realize how horrifying the system was. Sasazuka looked at the faces of the investigators and sighs loudly. As I just described, sus substitution murders at first glance seem like they'd reduce your sense of guilt, but you bear the target no ill will. As time passes, the full weight of what they've done drags them into regret. Akito Sarah, who provided this data to us, is one of those regretful perpetrators. Uh oh, that's okay. I was like, who's that again? Okay, that's the chief guy. Akito Sarah! Is that missing boy is on the wanted list? Yes, he made contact with me and wished for a third party to judge him after he gathered up Adonis's internal information. <sighs> Bringing each individual to justice is not enough. We felt that the entire system needed to be destroyed or this would be meaningless. Some may doubt the validity of this, but I spoke to him directly, and I want to believe him. Oh my god, I love you so much harder, Sasazuka. Oh, the love is so fucking hard. I just want to slam him up against a wall right now and be like, you're just amazing because we love Akito, and you're like, look, can we just... He did some terrible things, but can we not just, like, death penalty him? Can we just, like, can we just... We just give him a hug and be like, it's okay. It'll be okay, Akito. It's okay. It'll be okay. Like, juvie, something. Like, I think he can be, like, reformed. I think he can be reformed. I don't think he needs to be in prison for the rest of his life. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> I love it. Like, oh, oh, I love you. <laughs> no, normally you wouldn't side with criminals. You'd be like, no, fuck you. You murdered someone. But you're like, oh, Akito, I'll forgive you. Akito's not even one of our romancy characters, and I'm giving him the fucking Saint Germain treatment. Like, it's okay, we forgive you for killing people. <laughs> we forgive you, you were in pain. You knew not what you did. <laughs> like, just come back and love my brother. <laughs> I just love Akito. I just, I don't know, anyway. So Suzuka started, started explaining the data that he had decrypted. I followed along with the copy of the data had been provided. According to this intel, Adonis has their main hideout near the east exit of Shinjuku. And there was an abandoned construction site there that housed the entrance to their hideout. What's the size of their organization? Unknown. But there should be a significant number of armed members at their headquarters. If you expect danger, shouldn't you assess the situation further before breaching them? Time is of the essence right now. Especially because... Sasazuka looked around and said this with a fearless smile. Look at that, look at it. There's most likely someone tied to Adonis amongst the police. One, more precisely, or, more precisely, someone here. His direct statement caused murmurs to ripple through the crowd. <gasps> I don't want to know who it is! Don't tell us until we go down Yanagi's route! Oh my god, I love it. <gasps> right? Oh my god, I love this. We had that twist in Enomoto's route, like... <gasps> Akito, did you almost bomb someone? Were you going to... And then we're like, oh, Akito, you bomb... Oh, someone's in the police? Ooh, we should have seen that coming, to be honest with you. But like, you know. I've been involved with the rest of the story to like, not think again. Like, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Like... I get the theories as we hit them. Like, oh, ooh. Is it the police chief? Because this is like the first time we've been introduced to him. That would be fucking amazing. But this makes him look bad. So I don't understand why he would do that, but... It's not Minigishi, is it? That would be fucked up. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Don't tell me. I don't. I hope it doesn't. You don't find out until like Yanagi's route, where like everything explodes, and you're like, "Oh my god!" Anyway, his direct statement caused murmurs to ripple through the crowd. Oh my god, man, the tension. 
There's a mole in Investigations HQ, even though we handpicked each member. Is it you, Sasazuka? Because that would be fucking amazing, too. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you go down his route, happy ending, and then you go down Yanagi's route, and he's like, it's me! <gasps> <laughs> oh my god. Yes, the fact that we've been unable to catch them wouldn't make sense otherwise. Although it was only a partial list, the data included lists of names of accomplices. But it seems like they've already fled. Sasazuka looked at some empty seats and returned his gaze to the police chief. That's all I have to say. If we want to crush Adonis, then we have to move now. As we speak, the members of Adonis are plotting their escape. They should already be gone if they're fucking smart. They'd be like, shit, guys, we're out. Like, Sasazuka returned to his seat, and the shocked gazes turned to police chief Takeda. 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 I'm just going to call him Takeda. The put... Uh, the police chief folded his arms with a frown and thought deeply. Chief. I know. It's time for me to fulfill my duty. Attention all hands. We'll now conduct a compulsory and comprehensive criminal investigation of the Donna's headquarters. Enemy resistance is expected to be fierce. You're going to be working with each other in field ops for this. Yes, sir. Well, okay, I guess. Um, I'm a whale. Can I go home now? <laughs> I've been turned into a cow. Can I go home now? I think that's what it was. If you know what that's from, props to you. I can't remember. I think it was the cow that actually said that. Name. Oh, sure. Yeah. Anybody else? No, no. We're good. We're good. We're good. Fucking ostrich with a police helmet on. Okay. Anyway. The investigator saluted and began to leave the room. Now I'm just imagining a bunch of animals with police helmets on running to... Okay. All departments cooperate with traffic division and local office and blockade the areas... Minigishi gave out detailed orders while Sasazuka walked up to the chief, who was wiping his forehead. I'm police chief Takeda. I'd like, you talk I'd like to talk to you one more time regarding that promise. Swords and firearms control law. Yes, I've obtained the information that exposed Adonis' headquarters. Although there may be some slip-ups, this will likely lead to the X-Day incident cases being closed. The police chief squinted his eyes at Sasazuka's defiant attitude. Before I answer you, tell me this. What moved you to do this? Because I lived in a society where guns were commonplace, and I know how terrifying it is. I was living in America, and I lost my mother to gun violence. <laughs> I love you, Japan. You're like fucking gun-toting American fucking idiots. Yes, thank you. <laughs> You're kind of right. There may be some people who say that I'm just naive, but having a functioning society without citizens carrying guns is a part of Japan's pride. Mm -hmm. I see. Oh, there was one more thing. Sasazuka suddenly stopped talking and looked over at me. I also didn't want to see someone cry. Hey, you're making me look bad. <laughs> but I'm going to cry because you, oh my God, this is so nice. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> Police Chief Takeda wouldn't know what he meant, but I jumped at that statement. The police chief thought about it for a second and then smiled. All right. It's not something I can decide on my own, but it's a promise. Find a way to get it done. Really? The police have been divided on the repeal of the swords and firearms control law to begin with. Distributing firearms instead of restricting them as a means to fight crime is an insult to the police force. Yeah. Without being pressured by the government, we would have never agreed to it. So... Can I trust you? Huh. Society may see me as weak, but I'm still a police officer. I'll uphold justice and work towards fulfilling my promise to you. I bowed to the chief as he walks away, and I felt genuinely relieved. The collar that held my life hostage was gone. I thought it was only repealed within Shinjuku anyway. Like, So it's like, well, Adonis is gone, and there's no reason for us to all have fucking guns repealed, you know? Although, here's the problem, right? I mean, obviously, it's a game, so it's not going to be the real problem. But, like, here's the real problem. Okay, we have this tiny... Okay, we have this area of a city, right? We give everybody guns. They're all government-issued. Okay, now everyone with the laws back in play, bring us your guns now. We gave out 5,000 guns, but only 4,000 of them came back. Huh. Yeah! There's going to be some shady motherfuckers who are going to keep their guns and then, then tell you, like... I mean, that's the problem, right? Like... That's why, like, everyone, like, there's, that's one of the huge arguments about, like, 
gun laws in America. I'm like, well, you can't take guns away from normal people because you're still going to be criminals with guns. Well, that's true. There's still going to be illegal guns. I mean, still. But again, you having a handgun in your house to protect your family because somebody breaks in and, like, honestly, you can't maim them. Like, I broke his kneecap so he wasn't going to rape my wife because then he'll sue me because he broke into my house and was trying to rape my wife and probably killed my kid. But I'm the asshole because because I broke his kneecap. OK, that's why you shoot to kill. That's really fucking sad in the society because then he can't sue you. So I cared more about your life by just maiming you so that you would stop being a fucking bastard. But you can sue me because you're a fucking criminal. What the fuck? Stupid. Stupid. Um, but like, so that's one thing. Like, I got a gun in my house to protect my house. I go to the shooting range. I know how to use it versus I'm walking around with the giant fucking like military grade weapon because I think I'm all. No, you don't need that. You don't need that for any reason. It's crazy. It's crazy. And you don't need to also be like fucking carrying like your fucking gun everywhere. Like, well, I can see a carry, but fucking awesome. You do you need it on you? Do you live in, like, some really shady, scary area? Is this the fucking purge? No, you don't. You live in a nice, quaint fucking town. You don't need a fucking gun on you wherever you go, okay? It's crazy. Like, Jesus. Jesus, America, simmer the fuck down. But, I mean, you know, you drive into Texas, and it's like, welcome to Texas, here's your gun. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I'm not opposed to people having guns, like... If you know how to use them, but that's the problem. Like, you should know how to use them, and there should actually be, like, background check. And, like, that's that's all people who want gun control want, is, like, not take away your guns. Nobody's trying to take away your fucking guns. We're just trying to make sure that, like, fucking crazy people who are, like, criminals or, like, literally mentally ill don't get access to guns. Because guess what? They're the ones that usually shoot people. That's all I'm saying. There is never, I, I really just don't see any case where, like, somebody who was completely emotionally, so I was like, no, I have a great life and everything's great and I'm just really happy, but I just decided to, like, do a mass shooting. It just felt like the right thing to do on a Sunday. Like, no, that never happens. That's not how it works. So, I'm just saying. Just saying, you know. Yeah. There you go. I'm going to get off my, what, <laughs> political soapbox there. I just seriously, like, it just, it just seemed crazy. So, but this... There's going to be a bunch of people that aren't going to give their guns back. So you're fucked now. Now you got illegal guns out there. Although we're making it seem like it's the future and like they've got some kind of like I can shoot it and like and then the bullet and I, I don't know, like they can track it like somehow like, oh, wait, this was Tom's gun. What? Which is just like, again, Japan just fucking warming up everything. Come on. I'm assuming this is supposed to be sometime in the future. But anyway, Adonis's hideout had been discovered. Police Chief Takeda also promised to help repeal the Swords and Firearms Control Law. And things were going so well that I almost thought I was dreaming. Didn't they repeal the law? And he is going to reinstate it? I'm confused. Which Well, we know what they're trying to say. I just don't remember which way was which. Now. Hey, snap out of it. This isn't finished yet. We still have a lot of analysis to do. Including work on the collar. Help me. Y yes, what should I do first? Coffee and donuts, extra sugar and milk. <laughs> okay. <I'm> like, <gasps> yes! Hi. Aye, aye, Captain. Two days after the assault on Adonis's headquarters, the Metropolitan Office dispatched their entire force and arrested many of the Adonis members. But as the police feared, all of the members they found had their memories erased, just like Manabu Soda. The executive level members had already fled, and they'd wiped the data from the hideout. Fortunately, they weren't able to completely erase everything. Because of the quick strike against the hideout, some evidence had been left behind. Sasazuka's cybercrimes team and many other investigators had been poring over the data day and night. Amidst that, Akita was taken into custody during the raids, and like the others, he was found in a state where he had his memory erased, which is good! Okay, he's like, wait, I don't understand. Why am I here? And they're like, it's fine. Nothing, sweetie. It's okay. Someone kidnapped you. Really? I was kidnapped? Yeah, but you're fine. You're fine. Because he doesn't have to live with his guilt. I'm okay with his memory being erased. He doesn't have to live with his guilt. It's okay, Akito. Thank you, Adonis. 
Not only was the memory of Adonis gone, but he barely even remembered Kazuki. Oh, no. That's sad. That hurts. The historical string of crimes in Japan seemed to have finally come to a conclusion. That makes me sad. Because obviously it was right around the time he met Kazuki and then, you know, that's when he joined Adonis and then became better friends with Kazuki and everything. Oh, that hurts my heart. However, the police still had far more work left to do. They can repair the relationship. It'll be fine. Shinjuku is now moving to lift the quarantine. They're collecting all the, dis the distributed firearms. Shinjuku citizens have been told the reason and the police are assisting those still in fear. A cop's job is never ending, and the people who were involved still suffered scars. Everything is not back to normal yet. I'll do what I can. What I do will not change from now on. I say, that can't be the end. Like, um. Excuse me. Hey, Toshino, what's up? Where are you on duty right now? Yeah, I came to pick up some materials because Sasazuka asked me to. Oh, I see. You got a lot to do. Not at all. Sasazuka is much busier than I am. He said that he needs to dig through the data, so he's working without rest. I really wish he would just take a break. I remembered that we had a small argument about the subject this morning, and I made a sour expression after recalling that. I'm really worried about him, but he refuses to listen to me. Well, not that's any different than usual. I wish he would depend on me a little more. I <laughs> like how Anamoto's like, what the fuck? And then they're laughing at me. I complain, but Yanagi and Anamoto just look at each other and simultaneously erupt into hysterical laughter. I can't imagine Yanagi laughing, and it's adorable. W what is it? Nothing. You sound like your seaweed head's mother or something. That's not true. Not like his mom. You sound like his wife. You too, Yanagi. I want to be. I am not his mother, his wife. That's a little bit closer to what I'd like to be, thank you. Come on, don't be mad. It's thanks to you that Shinjuku has almost returned to normal. I'm embarrassed by how little I was able to do, but I am thankful. Inagi... Oh, well, it ends well. I have to admit, it's thanks to Seaweed Head, so I'll assume it's thanks to you, Hoshino. I hate to admit it's thanks to Seaweed Head, so I'll assume that it's thanks to you, Hoshino. Alright, I'll tell Sasazuka that. Ugh, please don't! Just keep that under wraps, okay? <laughs> Don't call me his mother or I'll tell him. I laughed at Enomoto as he grows pale and Yanagi turned back to me with a new resolve. Yoshino, we're not police officers. We won't be involved in any future investigations. Even so, if you ever need outside assistance, you can give us a call. We'll do everything we can to help you. Yeah, it only lasts a short while. We're friends. Just come visit us whenever you want. We can go on a date, too. Huh? Inamoto, shut your mouth unless you really want Sasazuka to kill you. Got it. We can go on a date. Sasazuka will literally fucking... I want to see that. I want him to be like, hey. What's up, Spacey? Just like hit on us a little bit. Like just joking and just watch Sasazuka fucking lose his shit. Be like, you love me so much. <laughs> we talk like we're friends. I can barely even imagine the way we were when we first met. I'm happy that we can laugh like this. It's a bond that was created from the collar. That may sound terrible out of context, but I'm actually glad I met them due to the caller. All's well that ends well. Minamoto was right about that. I expressed thanks to my wonderful friends and left the office to deliver the materials that Sasazuka had asked for. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> like, I want to keep going a little bit. But we're still going to have to do the bad endings, too. Um, so maybe we should just do the end of the good route in the next part. And then do the bad endings so you don't feel so terrible. Well, that might ruin the good ending. You know what? Let's just go a little bit longer and see. We'll go a little bit longer. We'll put it a little bit longer, and then we'll see if it's not ending in, like, the next, like, ten minutes. Then we'll stop. So anyway. Hello, Mochita. I have the materials. Hi there. So what did the organized crime division say? Mob! In this context, the mob... 
refers to an organized crime syndicate. There are police officers and entire departments that are dedicated to fighting these criminal syndicates. They were talking about the organized crime division, not the mob. I don't... Okay. And just as we suspected, there's evidence that the guns are being sold on the black market. Told you! I knew it. All right. Let's head to the scene. Just in case. Don't forget to carry your firearm. Understood. Adonis was crushed thanks to the raid the other day, but all departments had, lot, had lots of cleanup work. SRCPO's task didn't change at all. Lochita and I were placed in charge of collecting the firearms distributed to citizens. We'd planned for a quick and painless collection process, but there were people reluctant to give their guns up, or the guns were being sold. Fucking told you that would happen. Didn't I? I told you. Our primary task right now was trying to hunt down all these missing firearms. Well, till all the firearms are collected, quarantine won't be lifted. We'll have to work hard so that we can bring Shinjuku back to normal. That would be like, if you don't fucking turn over your goddamn guns, you're going to stay quarantined. Do you ever want to leave this motherfucking city turning your goddamn guns, assholes? Yes. Aye, aye, Captain. It may be hard work, but we weren't the only busy people. The police and government were working to get the Shinjuku quarantine lifted. And Sasazuka seems to be really busy with a lot of analysis work still. Um, Sasazuka, is there anything I can help with? Nothing. Do your own work. That's all you need to do. Just as Sasazuka said, I just have to focus on what I can do. I'm ready, Mochita. Let's go. I got myself fired up and I started running after Mochita. Who's already gone. That day, in the afternoon, I returned to the station for my lunch break. As I was walking down the hall... Hoshino! You're under arrest! Hands grabbed my arms from both sides and quickly stopped me in my tracks. <laughs> I thought it was going to be Sakuragawa. <laughs> I was like, Hoshino! I was like, it's probably her. And then, you're under arrest! And I was like... I don't think I'm actually under arrest, but I wasn't really sure what was coming, so... M Mukai and Sakuragawa... Hey! Have you eaten lunch yet? Oh, not yet. I was thinking of eating at my desk. Perfect! How about eating with the field op support team? I don't mind, but I only brought one bento today and there's no meat inside. That's fine. It's too bad I don't get a piece of your cooking, but Mukai and I brought our own lunches. Besides, you're only the side dish today. I started to back away from these two bloodthirsty birds of prey. <laughs> you're not getting away. We got lots we want to ask. The elated Mukai had uh, hold my left hand. Sakuragawa, eyes squinting, had my right hand. They held me from both sides and started to drag me away. But my lunch! W wait! Because of my line of work, I knew what this is. The textbooks mentioned this. This is how they transport criminals! I'm getting escorted, or rather, hauled away to, the, to a room in field hops. We trade side dishes from our lunches, as we always do, so we had a big family-style lunch set up. It's been a while since us three girls had a nice little chat. Uh-huh. But if we get too noisy, Suraishi's going to get upset. The director isn't around. He's taking an extended vacation. Extended vacation? Really? Now of all times? Yes, the incident is solved, and I'm tired. Mukai should be able to deal with the rest. That was the note he left. Oh my god, it's not him, is it? No, don't tell me. Don't tell nobody tell me till we get to his path. But like, I can't no, you can't do that to me. <gasps> but you know what I mean? Like Akito, like Akito, did you bomb someone? <gasps> Sedaishi, did you are you fucking a bad guy? Were you on their side? Or is he really just like, ah, fuck it, now I'm bored. I don't know. I mean. Ah, he's annoying when he's around, but he's also annoying when he's not, too. That demeaning letter being a cute cat-themed envelope only made it more infuriating. Being in a cute cat-themed envelope. Doesn't that... It sound, okay, it sounds suspicious. Okay. All right, I'm not going to be suspicious of him till we get down his path, but like, oh my god. <laughs> That's typical Suraishi. Mukai uh, poked at the stewed sweet potato of my bento box in her rage. When I started eating my salmon roll bowl and noticed Sakuragawa grinning with chopsticks in her mouth. Setting that aside, Hoshino, you should know why you're here. W why? I haven't the slightest clue. We can have meat, but you're still talking. Ugh. I was going to get you to talk over some drinks, but we haven't had time for that recently. So... 
How's it going with Sasazuka recently? Out with it. N nothing much recently. There's nothing going on between us. That's a lie. You love him. Shut up, Spacey. Just tell her. I heard you went to Sasazuka's place. Huh? And you stayed the night. W where'd you hear that? Oh, so it's true? Well, Kai smiled broadly as I realized that I'd been trapped. Oh, no. She may be polite to me, but she was still a member of the crime lab. And even though she hated to admit it. Uh, but she was a subordinate of Suraishi. I should have known I needed to be more cautious around her. Oh, even I didn't think you'd gotten that close. No, it's all a misunderstanding. There wasn't anything special about it. Oh, really? A man and a woman alone in his place? And he didn't even force himself on you? He didn't even... <laughs> Who do you date, Sakuragawa? He like, he went alone to his place and he didn't force himself on you? You're like, honey, that's not how it's supposed to work. Oh, God, you poor thing. Why don't you think about it and tell me again how it was nothing special? Oh, well, yeah, so it was special because he didn't force himself on me. Well... Oh, it was amazingly special. <laughs> you want me to recreate it? I don't mind, but just this once, okay? Well, hey, you idiot. No, he just called me an idiot. You're my partner. That means you're not alone. Why are you worried when I'm with you? Go on, explain yourself, stupid. He calls me stupid all the time. Oh, he loves me. A scene of embarrassment climbed from my heart to my cheek. My hand touched my lips subconsciously, and the two of them pounced on it immediately. Did you see that, Mukai? Oh, I most certainly did. She has the look of a maiden in love. Oh, God. Ugh. Come on, Oshino. Resistance is futile. <laughs> so you're a Borg. Okay. Cough it up and make it easier on yourself. So Kuragawa trapped me, tapped me on the shoulder making me feel like I was under interrogation. W well, my shoulders shook as I gave up trying to resist and opened my mouth. Kiss! He kissed you? Oh, my, my, my. N no, but um, it was more to comfort me than an actual kiss. Overseas, that's just how they greet each other, I hear. No, no, honey, no. No, we do not kiss each other on the lips like that. In public, you can kiss your partners. No, there's no, like, PDA thing. There should be a little bit, but, like, no, everybody, everybody does some PDA shit. But, like, nobody is like, oh, you're crying. Let me kiss you on the lip. No, girl. Mm -mm, honey. Get out of here. I don't care what Sasazuka thinks about it. I want to know how you felt. You don't have any feelings for Sasazuka. Th there's a part of me that does, but I just can't go for it yet. After being pointed at and needled, I hesitantly continued. No, Shino, this might just be me being nosy, but as your senior, let me give you a bit of advice. Even if you're comfortable with your relationship now, it can't go on this way forever. That's true. You might be okay now, but Investigations HQ will be disbanded soon. A Sasazuka will return to the Metropolitan Office, and you won't be able to see him as much. What are you going to do then? You need to prepare for that happening. Don't fucking depress me! I... I... Well, I personally recommend you get in bed with him, and then it's checkmate. <laughs> I love her. Yes, luckily for you, it's almost Christmas. Now's the time to be bold. I love them so much. They're great. They're like, yes, please, do it. Do what they told you to do, girl. What? I can't bitch shut up and do what they say. Wait, I'm not ready for that yet. Yes, you are. Well, let me tell you a piece of good advice, Hoshino. A woman has to have guts. Anyway, I wish you luck. You better have some good news for us. I'll consider it. Before I realized it, we were done eating lunch and we were cleaning up. I parted ways with them as they pumped their fists out of encouragement. I fucking love it. They're like, go get him. Go get you some girl. Anyway, um, we're not going to be able to finish this. Uh, because we're like 15 over. So I said I'd give it a few minutes. Um, But what I'm going to do is wrap it up here and then we'll finish... I get the good ending in the next part, and then we'll do all the bad endings and see all the CGs. So, sorry. But we had a little bit of fun. So, anyway. I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up. And subscribe to see more.